These are incompetent people. We have incompetent people running our country, and our country has never been in more danger of World War III than it is right now. And we don't want to be the world's policemen. Under my leadership, our police and law enforcement knew that we had their back. We had their back. I gave them billions of dollars of excess military. We had military equipment in storehouses, warehouses all over the United States. And they didn't know what to do. They, they said, we can't give it to them. I said, why don't you want to? Because it will look too military. It will look too. This is a lot of it is safety equipment. You know, trucks that are armor plated and things when they go into riots. And I gave it to them billions and billions of dollars. And it's had a profound effect profound effect. And it was just sitting there gathering dust. It would have been valueless over a period of time. But today, I want to express our profound condolences to the family of police officer Kevin Cram, who you know, who was gunned down in the line of duty last week in Algona. You know all about it. Gunned down. We send them our love and our prayers, and we want every police officer across this state to know that they are heroes, and they have our total support. These are great people. Our police officers are great people. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Unlike Biden, I stood proudly with our friend and ally, the State of Israel. I kept my promise, recognized Israel's eternal capital, and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. And I got it built also, by the way. Would have taken 25 years for somebody to get it built. I got it built very quickly. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, something that they've been working on for 58 years. Planes would fly in every year. They'd come in and they'd leave. Nothing would happen. I got it done very quickly. And I withdrew the United States from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. The bad part is they haven't done anything with it. And now Iran's making nuclear weapons. And this guy does nothing about it. We had — that was the biggest thing I did for Israel. I ended the Iran nuclear holocaust, I call it. It was — it would have been the worst. And we were going to make a deal. We would have had a deal with Iran within two weeks after the election took place. And when that happened, uh, all of a sudden, China went back to buying oil. I prohibited China from buying oil. I said, if you buy oil from Iran, you're not going to buy anything. We're not doing business with you. We're going cold turkey. A lot of people like that anyway. We're going cold turkey. They said, uh, sir, we would uh, never want to buy oil from Iran. Now they're buying millions and millions of barrels of oil, making Iran very rich. And we would have had a deal good for everybody, good for Iran, frankly. We would have had a deal. But uh, the election got in the way of that one. We did the Abraham Accords. We did so much. But we would have had a deal there. And that would have been a good one. But they've done nothing with it. They haven't done anything with it. They were such a — they had such a great negotiating position, but they had no idea. But all of that was just the beginning. Here's just some of the agenda that we will — we will immediately implement when we become the 47th President of the United States. This is a movement. Did you hear the woman on ABC the other day? I won't mention her name. I don't want to embarrass her. But she said, because she probably loses her job over there. She said, that's a movement they have. That's a movement. Well, it is a movement. It's a movement like nobody's ever seen before. We have to keep it honest. We have to keep them honest. I will totally obliterate the deep state. We fired Comey. We fired so many different people. And we will rebuild the FBI and the Department of Justice from the ground up and make them fair again. And before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. We'll have it settled. Would have never happened. I knew him very well. I got along with him very well. The press hates me to say that, the fake news. Oh, he got along with them. Yeah, it's always good to get along with countries that have 1,800 nuclear weapons. But even if they don't, you want to get along if you can. But we got along well, and he knew he couldn't do it. He would have never done it, never. 
And he wouldn't have done it for another reason, because oil would have been so low that he wouldn't be able to prosecute it from the standpoint of money. He wouldn't have had the money. When oil went up to $120 a barrel, he was making so much money. You know, you don't think of making money during a war. He was making a fortune. Nobody ever made money like that. And now it's up almost to $100 again. He wouldn't have been able to do it because we had it down to $40 a barrel. But it'll all be done quickly. That will be done very quickly because uh, somebody said, whose side are you on? I said, I'm on the side of stopping all those people from being killed and all those cities from being knocked down. That's the only side I'm on. And I'm the only candidate who can make this promise. I will prevent World War III. And I'll tell you, we're very close to it. We're very close to it right now. We're very close. We've never been so close. We have an incompetent man negotiating with respect to nuclear weapons, giving away our weapons of mass destruction when other countries don't. We have a, an incompetent man, doesn't even know what it is, and he's negotiating with the smartest people, the smartest leaders, people that are at the top of their game he's negotiating with. He has no clue. We're very close to World War III, don't kid yourself. And this will be a war like no other. This isn't army tanks running back and forth, shooting at each other. The weaponry is so powerful, it's so devastating. This will be a war like this will be obliteration. We have a man who is incompetent. He was incompetent 25 years ago. Everybody knew that. I will stop the disaster known as Bidenomics, which means inflation, taxation, submission, and failure. That's what it means.